So this is recently launched Nord 2 and we have our old favorite iQ7. Now both phones are quite similar. You get the flagship MediaTek 1200 on Nord 2 and Snapdragon 870 flagship of 2020 in iQ7. And seriously, to create more confusion, they are both priced around 30,000 rupees. But the question that has to be asked is, if you have 30,000 rupees, should you buy the Nord 2 or the iQ7? What's the overall well-rounded phone? Well, this is Pratik, you're already watching TechWiser, and to answer the question, it's surprising. Let's go. Now, to get specs out of the way, apart from the processor, there's very little to differentiate in terms of RAM type, storage, or even battery. So I'll talk less specs and more real life differences because if it was about specs, you can read them on Amazon as well. So first of all, the size. The iQ7 has a 6.62 inch display compared to Nord 2 6.43 inch display, a slightly bigger display and the weight of the iQ7 is around 196, 197 grams, whereas the Nord is a bit lighter at 190 grams. Also the Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection on the back and the front of the Nord 2 really helps. On iQ7, they have Scott sensation protection on the display. In short, the design and in-hand feel is quite subjective, but if your choices are more of getting a one-hand phone, you will like the Nord 2 better. And if you're looking for phone for media consumption and gaming, then iQ is better since it has a bigger screen. But here's where the game totally changes. The Nord 2 and iQ7 come with a Full HD display, the Nord 2 has a 90Hz display and the iQ7 has a 120Hz display. Now we'll talk about the refresh rate in a moment, but in terms of display quality, it's almost the same. The iQ7 display is a bit saturated and vibrant and if I pause at this exact scene, the iQ7 looks more vibrant and this frame is the entire difference of colors. But here's the main problem as of now. Both these phones support Widevine L1 certification, but only the iQ7 can play 1080p videos on Amazon Prime, whereas the Nord 2 just cannot. Okay, just a quick update. On the 5th August OTA update, OnePlus fixed the Nord 2 1080p Prime video issue and now it works. So back to the video. Both of them have stereo speakers and I like listening to videos on speakers in my room. If you use headphones or earphones all the time, not at all wise. Stay wiser, subscribe to TechWiser. Anyways, the stereo earphones, if you're here for a moment, it's better on the Nord 2, more bassy. Okay, so the display is slightly better on the iQ7 due to 1080p on Amazon Prime as well as 120Hz and that 120Hz really helps if you game a lot. First of all, the Nord 2 comes with MediaTek Dimensity 1200 which is MediaTek's flagship chipset. The iQ7 comes with Snapdragon 870. Now both of them perform more or less the same but if there has to be a winner, it's Snapdragon 870. Like see in this CPU throttling test, the Nord 2 throttles a bit. It's not a day and night difference, but there's certainly a difference. And the effects of this throttling shows up in benchmarks as well. Like here, on Antutu, 2, the iQ7 scores a lot more than the Nord 2. The iQ7 scores somewhere around 7 lakh 2000, whereas the Nord on the other hand is on 5 lakh 49,000. But benchmarks are benchmarks. You don't buy phones to run benchmarks. So we did a video render test of about 2.25 GB file on KineMaster and as you can see, the iQ7 beats the Nord 2. A close difference, but it beats. Now games are also a bit better on Snapdragon 870, like here. For instance, if you play BGMI or Bug Me, both the Nord 2 and iQ7 can play 60 FPS on smooth graphics. I've tested it and they do stay stable at 60 FPS. But the iQ7 allows you to play at Ultra HD graphics, which is currently not possible on Nord 2. You can have fun at 45 FPS in Ultra HD. Again, in Call of Duty, you can play max FPS at very high graphics, but on Dimensity 1200, you can play max FPS at only high graphics. Again, for my favorite and really heavy game, Genshin Impact, it runs a bit better on iQ7 at heavy graphics 60 FPS. Generally, I've noticed games are supported a bit better on Snapdragon chips. Also, the iQ7 has a 6000 square millimeter cooling system that works well. And you also get a dual display chip which helps in 120fps gaming in Call of Duty and Genshin Impact. I've explained what it does better here. The display and performance is slightly better on iQ7 and I would say the same is the case with camera as well. Most of the time, 
I would prefer IQ7. See, if you have normal conditions, no human beings, the photos on the Nord are more color accurate. IQ has vibrant and saturated colors a bit over the top. Like here, if you see the photos in the grass, then books and our baby Yoda, it's a bit saturated on IQ7. The problem with not two camera start is when you put human portraits. The human skin tone turns out weird. That's the problem I've seen with OnePlus phones like OnePlus 9R, OnePlus Nord, OnePlus Nord CE and again OnePlus Nord 2. Here, if you're shooting against the light, have a look at my face. Same for videos as well. Here is the video sample of Kaushal and you see the Nord 2 has such weird desaturated skin tone. On the other hand, IQ7 is much better. A bit saturated but I would prefer IQ7. OnePlus really needs to work on the human skin tone issue. It's happening with almost all OnePlus phones this year. They have improved a bit in night mode and it's better overall on the OnePlus Nord 2. But overall, it's the IQ7 for camera display and performance. But here's where the things change. The software. The main strong point of Nord 2 is software. And plus the app recommendations you see here and there on the app search, notifications from the app store. All of them can be disabled, but it shouldn't have been there in the first place. On the other hand, Oxygen OS is still very clean, no ads. But the million dollar question, Color OS has really affected the Nord 2. There's a different camera UI, settings page, everything. And if I have to make a prediction in one or two lines, see, this is Realme Oppo with Color OS. And these are OnePlus phones with Oxygen OS. The Nord 2 is somewhere in the middle. And going forward, it is going more towards Oppo and Realme. That's the future. Is it bad? No. You get more features, but will you get ads like Oppo and Realme? Not as of now, but what about the future? Maybe, maybe not. You tell me in the comments. For other small things, both have the same 65, 66 watt charging and almost similar battery specs. IQ7 comes with a 4400 mAh battery and Nord 2 has a 4500 mAh battery. Both of them charge from 0 to 100 in about 35 minutes. Not much different. Now, here's the small thing with the Nord 2. You can record calls, but you have a disclaimer. This call is now being recorded. IQ doesn't do that. And previously, you could install OnePlus Dialer APK, but it doesn't work on Nord 2 now. So if call recording is a big deal for you, you should consider IQ7. Another thing worth mentioning is network on IQ7. First of all, see here, I easily get 4G plus on Geo on Nord 2. Now, if I put the same SIM back on IQ7, see, I don't get 4G plus. Again, you only get one 5G band on IQ7 and six bands on Nord 2. Something you should look out for if you're planning to use the phone for three to four years. So here's the bigger picture. If you want really good value for money, like features and specs for everything that you pay, IQ7 has better performance, better gaming, good battery life, charging, etc. You should get IQ7. But if you're someone who wants a good software experience, you need a phone that looks good, more one-handed, not two is what you should go for. Although we don't know what will be the future of Oxygen OS after the recent Color OS code base merger. On that note, this is Pratik signing off. See you pretty soon.